working with Harley Surface this semester um, in historical geology. This is actually her fourth honors project, so she was kind of leading me as this was my first one advising, so it's kind of a mutual relationship working back and forth. And um, It was a little bit of a challenge to start with because she has a very strong interest in archaeology, so trying to move her into thinking historically and geologically um, it was a little, you know, bump at the beginning with coming up with a project, but I think we came up with one, she came up with one that was able to combine her interests with a little bit of archaeology, but really taking things to have a much more geologic context. So I think it worked out really well, and I think she's done a great job. So she will tell you about how we go from crops to cows and copper tools, and how agriculture has formed a new geologic epoch. history is divided into units of time called eons, eras, periods, and epochs. Geologic time intervals are often determined by the appearance or disappearance of organisms in the rock record. One of the most famous eras in Earth's history, due to the existence of dinosaurs, is known as the Mesozoic. Each of the time intervals you see are determined by global, recordable changes in the biosphere that have been preserved in the rock record. Humans have modified the environment to better suit their needs since they first evolved approximately 200,000 years ago, which is just a fraction of the 4.6 billion years that Earth has exi existed. Despite the human species still being in its early stages, some believe that they have altered the biosphere at a rate that could threaten the lives of every organism on Earth. Nobel laureate Paul Crutzen coined the term Anthropocene at a scientific conference in 2000 to put a name towards the human impact on the biosphere. Since then, the Anthropocene has been mentioned in over 200 peer-reviewed journals and has yet to actually be declared an official epic. The official adoption of the Anthropocene as a new epic depends upon previously established criteria by the International Commission on Stratigraphy. Past epics have been determined through a global stratotype section and point, which is a continuous strata layers of sedimentary rock or soil that marks a change in structure. The change or shift in sediments is referred to as a golden spike and is used as a, a geologic boundary between two epochs. Evidence for a new epoch must be global, easily recognizable, and must be preservable in the rock record. Proponents for the Anthropocene believe that humans have made a global impact on the biosphere that will be evident in the rock record for millions of years to come. The issue is knowing where to place the start of the Anthropocene. The most substantial arguments have pointed to the start of three events in human history, the onset of the agricultural revolution approximately 10,000 years ago, the start of the industrial revolution in 1760, or the beginning of the atomic age in 1945. Those who su support the start of modern agriculture as the start of a new epoch claim deforestation, the change in pollen patterns and chemical traces left in anthracels will leave a lasting impact on the biosphere that will be pre preservable and identifiable in the rock record. Proponents for the boundary being placed at the start of the Industrial Revolution use the rapid expansion of fossil fuel use, an exponential spike in human populations, and an increase in atmospheric carbon dioxide levels to showcase their argument. Radioactive fallout from the atomic age, however, could also be the beginning of the Anthropocene. Advocates of this theory feel like this hypothesis feel that chemical residue would be long-lasting. Opponents, <laughs> opponents of the Anthropocene are concerned that the presented evidence does not meet the criteria required to declare a geologic epoch. Many stratigraphers believe that there is no exact point where geolo geologists can determine the beginning of an Anthropocene ep epoch. Should a point be found, there is no guarantee as to how long evidence of it will be preserved in the geologic record. Geological epochs generally last more than three million years, and there is no guarantee that modern humans will last even that long as a species. In addition to those arguments, adding a new epoch would cut the current Holocene epoch short by more than two million years. Adding a new epoch based solely on human contributions may be a little homo sapien centric. 
Based on changes in environmental depositions, technofossils, and domesticates as index fossils, I conclude that humans are currently in the Anthropocene epoch and that it began at the start of the agricultural revolution 10,000 years ago. Rather than cutting the current Holocene epoch short, I would propose replacing the Holocene epoch title with the Anthropocene. Humans did not begin to modify the landscape or profoundly change the biosphere until after agriculture allowed populations to grow and expand. Without agriculture, humans may never have experienced the Industrial Revolution or the Atomic Age. Agriculture allows for surplus food, but also forces populations to live and sustain themselves within a limited area. This was a dramatic change from societies that were based on a hunting and gathering lifestyle and is what allowed for technological advancement of the Industrial Revolution as well as the Atomic Age. It is after the start of agriculture 10,000 years ago that sedentism increases as well as evidence of people in the recent rock record. When sedentism is allowed to flourish because of agriculture's surplus, more houses are built in a condensed area than could have been sustainable previously, and there is more left behind in the rock record. Hunter-gatherer societies produce less waste and have fewer possessions to leave behind. As populations grow, so does the demand for agriculture. In the argument supporting the Anthropocene, the effects of deforestation and change in pollen patterns has pointed towards the advent of agriculture. A lack of pollen diversity may signal the start of an Anthropocene epoch. This lack of pollen diversity occurs when homogeneous agricultural fields replace natural and diverse plant communities. Unsustainable agricultural fields remove large amounts of elements such as fixed nitrogen from the soil, while other agricultural practices actually have an excess amount of nitrogen. Deforestation for the purpose of agriculture will, at the very least, be recognizable as a facies change in stratigraphic layers and could at most be correlated with spikes of atmospheric CO2. Sedimentary layers containing the evidence of long-term human activity are known as anthrosols. The accumulation of a continuous layer of human deposits over long periods of time is capable because of sedentism brought on by agriculture. Intensive cultivation, irrigation, and fertilization leave behind disturbances in soil layers and varying, le varying levels of compounds such as phosphates, carbon, and ferromagnesium. It is in these cases that evidence can be found of humans altering or controlling the chemical compositions of depositional environments. Evidence of man-made changes in facies as a consequence of agriculture may also become evident in the rock record. Environments are often raised by fire in a slash and burn technique to, better pro to produce better conditions for extensive croplands. A wetland facies that may have existed for hundreds of years could be raised in less than a year and converted into agricultural fields. This sudden change in environment leaves behind a different sedimentary deposition. The change in facies would show in soil horizons. Raising would also leave behind a thin trace of charcoal between the agricultural and wetland depositions. Irriga irrigation processes may also cause a, a facies change. In areas where sources of water are not continuously replenished, humans build dams, channels, pumps, terraces, and canals. Irrigation techniques, techniques allow water to reach a landscape that had previously been dry and arid. Dams flood areas upriver and replace terrestrial deposits such as organic loamy soil with pebble, sand, and even salt precipitation. Precipitations. The actions of raising and diverting water flow are commonly found in all agricultural societies around the globe, which would make changes to agricultural facies a widespread occurrence. The emergence of agriculture also brings with it the increase of a stratified social structure. structure. Accumulation of wealth means more superfluous items are gathered in an area. Additionally, stone and metallic items are made in a surplus specifically for the use of trade or tools in order to obtain food or other resources. If deposited in favorable conditions, such as being quickly buried in a deep and anoxic environment, these stone and metal items have the possibility to last perhaps a million years or more. In early human civilizations around the world, the most widely used and abundant metals in stratified societies were gold and copper. Gold was primi primarily used for ornamentation, but copper could be used for both jewelry and tools. The earliest example of gold use was in 6000 BC, and because gold is a noble metal and does not tarnish easily, it could last as nearly as long as stone tools in the rock record. Although gold is not used directly as a farming tool, it could be used to indicate stratification and wealth in an agricultural society. The earliest use of copper was in 8000 BC. Copper was used primarily for tools of farming, coins, fishing, and war. 
Both gold and copper are resistant to weathering and would preserve well in the rock record. Items that are made of hard, inorganic materials like stone tend to preserve best. In a loose sense, some ar artifacts can be comparable to the functionality and uses of index fossils, which are commonly found widely distributed fossils with a limited time span that help date geologic strata. The trilobite, Wisconsin State fossil, is a, an example of an index fossil. Inorganic artifacts can be coined as technofossils. Sickle, sickles, knives, hoes, and weeders are made of many materials that can be found in durable stone and copper and iron around the world. In terms of residency, stone may last the longest, perhaps millions of years, if protected against weathering. The oldest stone tools, named the Oldowan Toolkit, are approximately 1.9 million year, years old and in remarkable shape. Stone tools fashioned for uses in farming and agriculture can last, can last at least 2 million years and would appear frequently in early agriculture 10,000 years onward. Humans have manipulated the evolution of am, animal, plant, and even bacterial life. A domesticated plant or animal has been selectively bred for desirable traits. Organisms have been domesticated for food, labor, medicine, and more recently for companionship. Selective breeding and genetic modification have changed the makeup of species and will change what is left behind in ge geologic strata, causing potential index fossils to occur. Humans and agricultural domesticates have had a symbiotic relationship for the past 10,000 years. The rise of agriculture can also be recognized as the emergence of new, artificially selected organisms in the stratigraphic record. Arguably, the domesticated animal can be included as a new organism that will one day be preserved in geologic stratigraphy. If one were to examine post-agricultural strata, they would find a sudden emergence of domesticated organisms in the fossil record. Selective breeding has already become evident in early archaeological records, demonstrating a high probability of the ability to preserve in the fossil record as well. Domesticated animals are morphologically different than their wild progenitors. Progenitors. One of the earliest domesticated animals was the goat, whose ancestor was the bizarre ibex. Wild goats are substanti substantially heavier and stockier than their domestic counterparts. And the goat horn has also changed from being long and curved, the long and curved structure of the bizarre ibex, to the small and straight of the domestic goat. Another organism modified by human behavior is the cow, whose ancestor, the oryx, were domesticated as early as 6000 BC in Asia. Prior to domestication, cows as they are known today did not exist in their many breeds and forms. Other early domesticates include pigs, llamas, and alpacas. 10,000 years ago marked the beginning of civilization as well as the start of the Anthropocene epoch. Over two million years from now, and perhaps even beyond, evidence of the beginning of the Anthropocene will be identifiable in geologic strata. Future geologists will be able to clearly mark new strata based upon the first occurrences of sudden facies changes from natural facies deposits to agri agricultural facies, the beginnings of technofossils including stone and metallic artifacts, and the emergence of domesticates, the Anthropocene index fossil. If humans continue on their destructive past, path, they may not last long enough for there to be a new epoch and may instead just be a geologic event.